Hi, this is Vicki Sokol Evans, Microsoft Certified Trainer and founder of the Red K Pup Company. We just received a question about creating a logical statement in Excel that would check for information in one cell and output a result in another cell. So it's checking for logic, if this, then that. And there is a function for, for doing this, and it's called the logical function or the if function. So if this, then that. So let's take a look at a real life example. So we are planning an event and I'm responsible for the guest list. And I wanna identify those people on the list that are, are who live out of state. And one of the things that I have in the list, I do know what their state is. We have everyone's address. And so the test that I want to perform is when the state is TX, then I want Excel to output the word local. And otherwise, if it's not TX, then I want to know that they are out of state. So that's the scenario I'm going to use for this example. And I want to um, explain how Excel would perform this test using the if function. So this is actually one of my favorite functions. I use this quite a bit, probably at least three times a week in my Excel spreadsheets if I'm creating them. The, the structure of the if function really has three components. It needs three elements or three items in its argument. So um, you start with an equal sign and you put the word if, and then you open with the parentheses. And then within the parentheses, within the argument, you need three items. You need to know what the test is. What are we testing for? And then it's going to output a yes or no. What, you know, what's the positive re result and what's the negative result? And what do you want to have happen? So, if we're, so the test is going to be if state equals Texas, then our positive result, what we want to output, is going to be the word local. Otherwise, they're going to be considered out of state. Okay, so there's only three elements you need within the argument of an if, if function, and then how that would be written out um, in your cell, in your result cell, you would type the equal sign, then the word if, open parentheses, and whenever the cell name, whatever cell you're checking, then you would type an equal sign, and then in quotes, because it's text, a text string, you need to put, use quotes, you would put TX. Then you separate that part of the argument with a comma, then you go to the second spot in the argument and you would put whatever, what is, what do you want to have happen when there's a positive result? So when the answer is yes, this person lives in Texas, what do you want out Excel to say? Well, I want the output of the word local. And then you would separate that part of the argument with a comma. And then that third spot, that's where you put the negative result. So if it doesn't qualify, if this person is not in Texas, what do you want Excel to output? and you would type in quotes because it's text out of state, okay? So before you, before you start um, adding your function to Excel, you'll need to do three, there are three steps in the process. Number one, you wanna make sure that your list is formatted as a table. This is a brand new feature that was introduced in Excel 2007 and, and not, not very many people know about it. If you've been part of the Red Cape community and in our classes and in our keynote presentations, you're well aware that that's the feature that I want to marry. And we do have a, a YouTube video about Excel, Excel tables. We will, I'll show you how it works in just a second. So the second step is to create a new column for the results. So we need a, a place to um, put the answer, right? We need to put the word local and, and out of state somewhere in our list. And then the third step is to create the function. It's very simple to do. You, with the list format as a table, you only have to do it once, and then it auto-fills the rest of your list. So makes making it very convenient. So let's take a look at the real life example. I have an Excel spreadsheet here with a guest list, and we can tell that, um, that there are people from different states within the country. These aren't real addresses and real names. So what I need to do first, remember the first step is to format this list as a table. So when I click in this list, I'm going to go to this very big button. I call it the big button alert. If it's a big button on the ribbon, it means that, it, that Microsoft thinks it's going to be very helpful for you. So um, this is a big button. And 
<laughs> don't worry about all the colors. You might be attracted to all these wonderful colors. What I want you to do really is just focus on this very first one. Let's just get it into the table format. So I click on that first option here. You want to make sure that if your table has headers like the word email and name and address city state zip, this checkbox is, is marked. Yes, it does have headers. It's very important. So I know a lot of people get tripped up because they click OK really quickly and they forget that. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and, and put it in table format. And then um, the next thing we're going to do is this st next step was to create our column, right? So we want our output. This is where we're going to see if they're local. So we'll just call this our local column. And this is where we want the result to be. So let me scoot over a little bit. Um, so it doesn't really matter where you are. If, if your list is formatted as a table, you could really be in any one of these cells. It doesn't really matter what row you're in. So I'm going to start, let's start with this one in Washington, D.C. And I'm going to start typing my function. So I'm going to type the equal sign and then the word if. And you'll notice that it is a valid form function here. So I'm just going to double click on if. And then it walks me through the process. Notice the three spots in my argument. And then this, the, um, the three elements are separated by a comma. So let's first put in our test. Our test is if. So we want to grab our state. So we just simply click on DC. And it brings in, because I have a table format, it's going to bring in that column name. So it's very nice and clean. And I'll type the word, the equal sign. And then we'll type, uh, in quotes, TX. And then close quote. So even though this one is not TX, that's fine. Our test is, we're going to test for the word state. I mean, test for the word TX. And then we put our comma, say that we're done with that part of the argument. Then the next spot in our argument is what do we want Excel to do if if the answer is true? Like if the result is positive result, it is indeed Texas, what do we want? Well we want the word local, right? So if it is indeed Texas, we want this value in this column to say local and then comma. Whoops, that's a period. Comma. Else if it's false, if it's a negative result, we're going to say out of state. And then we could do our close parentheses and then hit enter. And then for each one of our rows, because we have it formatted as a table, it automatically just flows on down to the column. So it doesn't matter if you have a 10 records or 1,000 records or 100,000 records, it's automatically going to uh, add that function to each one of the rows. Now, I know that some of you will probably have a question, what if I don't want anything? I just want the word local. I don't, if it's, if it's not local, just leave it blank. So what you'll do in that case, you'll just not put anything in out of state. So you'll just put um, open quote. So let's say I'm just doing it from scratch. I would put quote, quote. So I wouldn't put anything in there, the words out of state or anything. I've just put two quotes and that leaves it a blank value and then I hit enter and then it tells me okay these people are local these people obviously are not so that is how you create a logical function using the if function which gives you the if then then what so thank you very much for taking the time to watch this tutorial I hope you found this helpful be sure to like our page on Facebook at facebook.com slash redcapeco and you know, certainly post any comments or additional questions for our Red Cape instructors. Our Twitter, Twitter handle is at Red Cape Co. And we certainly invite you to sign up for more tips like this one. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye.